Let's see if we can find another house. Where do we live? Let's go find home. Oh, now we're flipping, guys. I'm sorry. Passengers, hold on. Seatbelt advised. That looks like my driving just now. <laughs> Going straight down. Let's go. How do you do it? Oh. How do you go? Oh, no. Partner, partner, help me. Do you see a bird? Do you see a plane? Where are we at? Welcome back. I just arrived to the Kansas Aviation Museum and we're going to do a little bit of touring. Somebody on my YouTube channel commented this location and so I would like to take you guys on a tour. So, but today we're going to do the Kansas Aviation Museum and we're going to look at some airplanes and all about the aviator world and I don't even know if that's the word, aviation world and the history behind the Kansas Wichita area. So there we have it. And here are the hours. And it does cost money. It's $10 for adults, six for kids that are, I think like six to 12 and eight for seniors. And I think you get a military discount also. The park board purchased 640 acres in 1928, but starting the building in 1930. With the Great Depression knocking on their door, construction halted. In 1933, construction resumed with the WPA project. Then, opening ceremony was held in 1935. So, you come to pay in, and then you come in the first room. Kind of gives you some of the cool mechanisms this is a Kemp engine 1911 model C made in Indiana that's kind of cool this is a Jacobs R755. It's a seven cylinder air cooled radial engine. That's really big. Imagine when the cylinder's going out on that thing. This is a six cylinder air cooled one. This is actually made in Kansas, Valley Center, Kansas. It's for town driving. It's a, sing it's a still and a single structured unit. Only three prototypes were built. They discontinued in 1973. And you can buy one in 1973 for $1,750. <laughs> and I bet it doesn't have airbags. <laughs> wanna, if you want to upgrade, you can buy this one. It's the Mercedes-Benz 1960. <laughs> this holds more people. So this device is like a simulator. So like with everything you learn, you do root cause analysis. How was it? Let's see here. It was 12 Air Corps pilots were killed in the 78 day period due to lack of training. And so therefore they made this to enhance their training. Like with everything else, you do root cause analysis, figure out why people are dying, lack of education. Let's educate. And so they made this device to do a better education. Sounds about right. Look how big that thing is. It's a turbo jet engine. That's 
I think I'm lost. I do need some help. Oh, here we go. Hey, ma'am, can you help me find the aviation center? She said, it's just this way. You go outdoors? If you want to go outside and see the airplane, she said. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> Not sure if you know, but back in the day, you used to get a sewing kit, real silverware, you get little personalized kits, all these complimentary gifts. Smoking on airlines was not only allowed, but encouraged to calm people down. And they sold them. That's pretty cool, huh? Back in the day. See the little button? Pretty cool. All right, so from 1935 to 1954, this used to be the formal municipal airport. And this is some of the things that they found while working on the site. This is part of the actual atrium part that they got. That's a 1930s Coke bottle. So the building that I'm in is building one and it was actually put in the register for her story places in 1990. But this location used to be the hub for as a last stop between like Denver, the Rocky Mountains, Los Angeles area. And all people will come here and they could eat, have like a restaurant area, socialize. And a lot of famous people came here and they once called this, let me find it on my sheet, the Country Club Without Dues. That kind of goes with what I was just saying. This was the last stop, last area was Wichita before you get over to the Los Angeles, up in the Denver area. So a lot of the people would fly over from the east side and they would land here, do the little break, and then they'd fly back over to the west side into the los angeles area rocky mountains but this was the last per se stop or this is the place you would meet for the hookup for the flight out over there i've seemed to lost my luggage anyone know where it's at okay so when you get here they give you this little piece of paper and it kind of gives you the inputs of it and by the way, I got a discount because I'm a nurse. So you can get a discount if you're a nurse, military, first responder, an educator, um, over 65 or seniors, you get a discount. And the kids that are younger, they get dis they get cheaper price. You can also go on Groupons and get a discounted rate. But so we just did the whole first floor, except for we did not go into the Air Capital Theater but they have a lot of education classroom sessions on this main first floor. Now this is where you can go outside to see the airplanes or we can go upstairs to lookout tower, which the lookout tower is one of the largest um, 360, feet, 360 degree view of that one of the highest parts in Wichita. So we're gonna definitely get a lookout tower. First, this is the Hall of Fame. These are all Pretty cool. There's an old clock. So Clyde Cessna owned this and he wore 1920s. He is in the Aviation Hall of Fame.
Now that's big. Like, super size. This is me standing next to this. The wingtip is this as long as my arm. <laughs> that's big. That's a good year. You've heard of Goodyear blimp? <laughs> Now you have the good year plane. <laughs> Let's say Watkins Skylark. And there's a Texaco. That one's just as big. Oh my gosh. Look at me. This thing's huge. standing next to it. I definitely would have to climb into this thing. I'd step up on this. Could you imagine? That would be fun. Or <laughs> they just you could just use your own steps. <laughs> now that's fun. A lot more space in there than I thought originally. When you see in the movies it doesn't look like that much space at all. This person has no control whatsoever. They're all their fate and everything is in the hands of this person. Better hope they're a good driver and hit no deer. Oh wow, look at the wingspan on that thing. This is um, First Flown in the Powder Puff Derby by Louise. They have stairs over there, but they lead to nothing. That's cool looking. Look how big these things are. Massive. I lost my notes. I gotta go find my notes. I put them down somewhere and I don't know where I put them. And so I have notes and everything. <laughs> um, oh, found them. <laughs> I saw my notes. So I was like, oh my gosh. So it's actually on the third floor where the control access and the um, highest point that well the one of the highest points in wichita is on the third floor i thought this was it but this was that back there right that's that keeper of the plains i've been there and did a video on that one highly recommend you go down there and kind of check that out This is the Cessna part of it. I would have wore that hat way back in the day, like maybe 80s. <laughs> Look at that. Is that Not quite for sure about the chair. Oh, it's a Cessna. This has no chair. This is a Cessna engine, and this is a, a damage from a duck. And I thought the deer were bad. That's cool. This is the good section down this way. This is where you can sit and play. Neat.
Now they actually have stuff like this if you go to the um, exploration center. The kids can get in there and they actually have a screen and then they have like a map, like a, um, I don't know what you call it, but like you can see where you are over the land and there's a screen that you can pretend and pull the levers and stuff at the um, exploration center. And they have something like this too, where you can learn how to use the propellers by pushing buttons on how the wind works. Definitely recommend. This is cool. Oh, see, it's a 3D. You can see the real life. Oh, wow. I would be crashing. Oh man. That's making me sick and I'm not even driving in real life. Let's see if we can find another house. Where do we live? Let's go find home. Oh, now we're flipping, guys. I'm sorry. Passengers, hold on. Seatbelt advised. Let's go. How do you do it? Oh. How do you go? Oh no. Partner, partner, help me. Do you see a bird? Do you see a plane? Where are we at? That just takes us back outside. We'll come back. Not done at the tour inside. This one takes us out this side, so you can see. But we're not done. We'll still have another floor. But they're locked. You can't get out. All right. That was the observation deck. That one that we just went out. The other one you can't go out. But that was the observation deck. That looks like my driving just now. <laughs> Going straight down. Honolulu. I've been there. Here's the Powder Puff Pioneers that we were talking about a while ago. This is an interesting story. So this is Connie. She was born and raised in Newton, Kansas. And she went to work as a riveter in Boeing in Wichita. And she caught a bus, started working there, but she had to have a bucker and so she had to have a partner. A woman named Jerry was also ready for a riveter. Nobody wanted to work with her because she was a person of color. So Connie and Jerry joined forces and they were one of the best duos of the B-29 project. After the war ended, Connie was laid off. So she stayed in Newton where she owned and operated her hair salon. And so moving on to the story, after it did over 1,644 nose sections, they went back and looked at it. The nose section was only missing seven rivets. Therefore, Connie could probably say that she did a good job and Jerry was an instrumental to her successful work. She is known as the Wichita Rosie of the Riveter and celebrated as a local hero. That's some hard, good dedication. So this is talking about the WASP, which is the Women Air Service Pilots. These women filled and transported gaps um, left by the pilots that was sent overseas. 
And while at war, many changes to the woman's roles in the industry in the skies that provided to be a short-lived experience. But after the servicemen started coming home, many of these women returned to their pre-war roles as moms and homemakers, and the men went back into the manufacturing. But these are some of the women during this time. Okay, this is kind of funny. This is the Kansas 99s. There's over 117 female pilots that all formed um, today known as the 99s. It's a nonprofit organization with over 150 chapters for, between the U.S. and Canada and over 44 countries. The 99s is primarily women that's connected through their love of flying. In 1951, they met in the Cessna Aircraft Company to create the Kansas chapter of the 99s. Now the husbands can join, but they are called the 49 and a halfers. <laughs> oh my gosh. This one's just talking a little bit about the how the Kansas women have made a tremendous impact on the aviation world. And this is Jerry Cobb sitting on an aero commander on the wing of it. But basically what it's saying is today's aviation women in the aviation would make this generation proud okay that's for when it's cold outside <laughs> these flags represent olive ann's beach and it's their mood flags basically i told you it's a good day or a woe day it's talking about weather conditions but she used it as her happy flags <laughs> Three hundred and sixty degrees view of one of the highest parts in Wichita. You can see all the way around. We'll slow it down, but we need to call for help first. In case you don't know how to use these phones, you gotta pick it up first, which this one doesn't do. And, you, and then you. Okay, I mean, which part are 
You can actually hear them talk. Then you take this and you rotate it all the way around until you click that. For those of you who don't know how to use an old rotary phone. <laughs> They're talking to us. That is too cool. That made me nervous. I thought they were saying, don't touch it. Don't touch the phone. You can even come up here. I am as high as I can go. That is just beautiful. So this was an actual operating system and people would fly in here. This was the main portal, main hub. And that's all the airstrips out there. And they still use some of them. There's the watch out tower now. So this tower was actually added in 1940 and it cost them $7,092 to build it. They did over 600 flights a day. It's the first air traffic control in the world to feature a slanted window design, which helped prevent glare and less likely to accumulate rain and dirt. They use the slanted window design today as a global standard that can be found all over the world. That's cool. And they did have a fire in Hangar 1. And then decades later, when the Kansas Aviation Museum took over, they returned the building as a museum. There you go. That's what it looked like after the fire. That's sad. Look how big that is. This is their flare gun that they use in case of emergency. A little bit rusted now. This is a Kellogg stick. And this is their headset that they used. This is how they would communicate with multiple locations. They would do like a little telegraph thing. That's cool. This is an old time one. Okay, now so going back to this, in case you don't know how to use a rotary phone, this picks up, you have to take it off the receiver and you take this and you have to click it to this. So that's how most of these kids these days. So the numbers would be numbered. And so if your number was one, you take one. And if it was like seven or eight, you'd go all the way around until your number all the way spins until you get to all your numbers and then you can talk. And when you're done, you put the receiver back on in case those kids these days don't know how to use a rotary phone. All right, now we're gonna come back out here and see the planes. <sighs> it is a beautiful day, not too hot.
Just a tidbit, I went out the wrong door. This is the wrong plane, so now we're gonna go out the correct door and see the other planes. <laughs> this door, maybe. Yes, this door. Okay, here we go. Now we can see the planes. Dear Lord. <laughs> I went out the wrong door on the first floor and went across the street. Wrong way. That's huge. That's where your luggage goes. This thing is so huge! Like I can touch the top! And that is about it! <laughs> Wow. <laughs> now that is just too cool. That's kind of freaky weird. Not many places to sit in this. That's talking about cramped quarters. There's a seat right here. Like, seriously. You're not allowed to actually enter into there. Here we go down this long hallway again. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed.